Well, our Foreign Affairs Minister Bob Carr is in Washington for talks with the new U.S. Secretary of State, but uh, that has been overshadowed by events back home and focusing on his support for the Prime Minister making front page news. Senator Carr joins us now from our Washington Bureau. Many thanks for your time this morning. Uh, those press reports uh, splashed across the front pages saying yourself and the other minister, Mark Butler, uh, the question of those reports, having really lost support for Julia Gillard. You are denying that those... Uh, this... Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah Beverly, those, those articles could not have appeared if the journalists writing them had contacted me or my office and asked whether they were true. I've confirmed talking to my, uh, my people back in Australia that no contact was made. Uh, if contact had been made, the reports would have been robustly rebutted and the story could not have appeared. Uh, those stories aren't true. I'm loyal to Julia Gillard and Julia Gillard, in my view, will lead the Labor Party to the election in September. Have you, though, at any stage spoken to some of your colleagues and other supporters, particularly in the New South Wales, New South Wales right, about Julia no. Gillard's leadership? No, Beverly. I, I said before, I say again, the story is not right. No, That's you, not right. In terms I, have, of your, I haven't spoken to such people. Have you not at any stage discussed the way the government's fortunes are playing out with your colleagues? No, I haven't. The story is wrong. If the story had been put to me, it would have been denied and the story could not have appeared. The story was not put to me, nor my staff. Bob Carr, you are sticking to the story in itself. What I'd like to ask you is away from that story, if we put that to one side, have you expressed reservations with your close colleagues about how the government's fortunes are playing out? No. Mark Butler, when asked about this today, has not given well, look, a look, Beverly, 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 I was invited on this program to talk about my talks with John Kerry, the US Secretary of State. I'm not commenting on domestic politics beyond the, the ground we've traversed. Uh, if you want to adhere to the agreement you struck with my staff and talk about North Korea, about the Middle East, about the US rebalancing to Asia, I'm very happy to have that colloquy with you. Um, I'm not going to comment on, uh, on beat-ups in the media about uh, the so-called Labor leadership question. All right, could I just ask you one further question about that? And then... No, you can't, you can't Beverly. The agreement, the agreement you struck with my staff was that we talk about the foreign policy agenda, the discussions I've had with the US Secretary of State. Now, I'm not being, I'm not being obstreperous, I'm not being cranky. I'm just telling you that was our agreement and we should get back onto it. Well, let's talk then about uh, your, uh, your meetings with John Kerry and our relationship going forward. Of course, a new Secretary of State for Australia and uh, I guess a new relationship to start. Yes, but, uh, but, but one with a reasonable basis. I met John Kerry uh, when he was back in April, of course, still, still uh, chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And we had quite a deal in common when we got down to discussing climate change and the environmental health of the world's oceans. Indeed, he, he, uh, he saw me as Foreign Minister of Australia, not having had a record of, of engaging with visiting Australians in Washington because he knew of my, my record and my interest in these two subjects. So we got along very, very well. And we, I, I, I began by saying how strongly we support his initiative in seeking at this moment, and this moment that presents a real opportunity, a real opening, a, a movement in Middle East peace, the Middle East peace process. And uh, he'll be going to the Middle East in company with his president. And I wished him well. And I said, there are some specific areas where Australia would like to contribute. Uh, Bob Carr, too, on that front, uh, Barack Obama is being urged, even by some of his close advisers, to really, I guess, take this issue by the throat and really try and get some progress. What is your sense that given this is his, his, obviously the last four years he has to really try and make a difference in this region? Yeah, I, I think there's an opportunity now, one that wasn't presenting itself to the Americans in the last four years. It's been created by a general exhaustion on both sides about where Israel-Palestine relations were going and by the opening created by a very interesting Israeli election outcome which saw the centre and not the chauvinist right wing of Israel assert itself. And although the election in Israel wasn't fought on foreign policy questions, it has brought to power and prominence 
people who do want to take some risks for peace. And the, on the other hand, I found that with our engagement with the Palestinians, and you'd recall that late last year, we voted not to block enhanced Palestinian status at the UN. We've got credibility with the Palestinians, the moderate Palestinian leadership on the West Bank. Um, I've detected with them a readiness to go for peace, and we would urge the Palestinian leadership to do that without setting up any preconditions. I think, I think without a doubt, President Obama and his Secretary of State have detected, not to put too strong an underlining here, but they've detected, detected uh, a convergence of views that now is time to make territorial concessions um, tied to security guarantees for Israel. In other words, the prospect of that, uh, that oft-discussed Palestinian state linked to the appropriate, the necessary guarantees for Israel is on the table. Just briefly, too, on other matters, and of course, North Korea, I guess we're seeing Myanmar, we've seen the, the visitation of the Prime Minister of Myanmar coming to Australia. But I guess North Korea, where there had been maybe some hopes new leadership would change things, that's another delicate issue um, for both, both Australia and the US to negotiate. Yeah, it's interesting, Beverly, those, those two narratives. The uh, Myanmar is infused with such hope. Here we've got a country, long a dictatorship, for 40 years or more a dictatorship, now making a transition towards, towards democracy um, and doing so with our support. Australia's had a forward-leaning engagement with Myanmar. I think we've created for ourselves a stock of goodwill with that country because we, we saw an opportunity and we nurtured it, we encouraged it. On the other hand, of course, uh, the news out of North Korea is all grim and I spent quite a bit of time with uh, Secretary of State Kerry canvassing our options, uh, looking at the, the position that China's in, uh, the exhaustion of China's patience with, with North Korea um, and the readiness of China to do what it did in the Security Council, support a resolution increasing sanctions on North Korea. Uh, the North Korean leadership has got an opportunity to engage with the world to look again at the path it's on, to, to lift the restrictions and the repression that, that applies to its own people, and to think again about the ruinous consequences of being so bellicose and negative and aggressive in its approach to the rest of the, the, rest of the planet. Bob Carr, we'll leave it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you.